I'm David Gilday. I'm here at ARM TechCon 2011. Um, we've just been demonstrating Cube Stormer 2, but actually I'm really excited because uh, I invited Thomas Rikiki along, um, uh, and I'd, I'd love you to hear a bit about what he has to, to do with Rubik Cube. So, hi Tom, it's good to meet you. It's my pleasure, it's good Thanks to meet you Thanks very much for coming. Um, so, I understand, in fact I've been following your work, you've been interested in Rubik's Cubes and, and the maths behind them for some time. Can you tell us a bit about what, what your interest is and how you got involved with it? Since I was a kid in high school, I've been playing with cubes, like many people. And uh, with the microcomputers available back then, it was fun to write programs that could solve the cube. But, boy, I never really thought the day would come when you could build a computer, a robot that would solve the cube. So this is Cube Stormer 2, and it just blows my mind. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you've been working on trying to prove how many moves the Ruby Cube can be solved in. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, what happens is, if I scramble a cube with a bunch of moves, I can then come up with a solution sequence that solves the cube, it solves it. And that solution sequence might have five moves, or it might have 20 moves, or it might have 15 moves. For every position, there's a single, or there's a single smallest number of moves it takes to solve it. And there are computer programs that will solve that number of moves for any given position. But that brings up a very interesting question. What's the hardest position? What position takes the most number of moves to solve? That position, the number of moves it takes to solve, we call God's number. And we've been trying to figure out what God's number is since Rubik came up with the cube. And finally, after about 30 years, last year, we actually figured out what it is. It's 20. 20 moves will always solve a cube. So I certainly remember the date. I was at uh, another ARM exhibition at the time when somebody announced it on the, the news in the UK. I've been following your work for some time. You had an article in the New Scientist, was it in about 2008, when you got to about 22 moves and proved that it was it was that low? Anyway, um, how does um, that number, for example, relate to what, what Cube Summer does, do you think? Well, first of all, it's interesting because you need an upper bound. I mean, you need to prove that you can always solve the cube, right? And you need to know which cubes are solvable and which are not. So some, you know, I can twist this cube in a way, take out pieces, put it back together where it can't be solved. You don't want to hand that to the robot because it's not going to know, you know, you need to know whether it can figure out the cube or not. And uh, so, so that's all part of figuring out whether a cube is solvable or not. But then you want to know how many moves. So 40 moves, is it always solvable in 40 moves? Well, yeah, okay, we can guess that. But how, how close can you get? If you know how many moves it takes in all cases, you can actually evaluate how close a particular algorithm is to optimal. Okay. So if I've written an algorithm in this smartphone, one's in the smartphone, uses the ARM, takes 200 megabytes of RAM, and it's giving me typically 18 or 19 moves. Is that is that good? Is that as good as I can get? Knowing that the best is 20, that the absolute best is 20 in all cases, tells you that's probably pretty close to optimal. Okay, so thanks. It looks like we're doing a reasonable job then. I yeah? think so. I think so. Are these numbers pretty much bear that out? Yeah, yeah. We got all these numbers today. Uh, I don't know whether you can see the, the fastest time we got there was 4.7 seconds, which is... Uh, we, we, we we're very pleased with that. It's it that impossible. Way. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just such a... You just, you, I've got friends that can solve the cube, and I've seen them solve the cube from random positions in about 10 seconds, right. which is such a mind-blowing thing. Okay, such a mind-blowing thing. To have a robot which does not have the same manual dexterity and be able to do that in half the time, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Have you ever thought of designing a robot yourself? Oh, boy. <laughs> As soon as I saw a particular cube solving robot, um, <laughs> which will remain unnamed for the moment, it solved a cube in average, I think, about 15 or 20 seconds or something like that. It was really fast. But the algorithms it used were not that great. The, the mechanics were great, but the algorithms it used were not that great. So I thought I'd apply some of the technology I came up with to find God's number to solve that problem. So I was going to build my own robot that was going to solve the cube, and I had a target. I was going to be able to solve the cube in five seconds, compete with all the humans, five seconds. This cube, saw Stormer 2, is solving the cube in five seconds, five, six seconds. I'm no longer interested. They pretty much <laughs> completely trunked me before I even got out of the gate. Okay, well, it's it's really good to meet you. Thanks very much for coming. Thank it's, you so much for your time. I've got lots more I'd like to talk to you about. Thanks, Tom. That's great. Thank you.